Well, I, my name is Sebastian. Thank you for having me on. I work at Emergo as the co-VP of engineering and as the project manager for the Cardano part of Emergo. Now, my role is a lot on the development side. And so I handle a lot of the development of the Udo extension and I help oversee the development of all the other related tooling we have for Cardano. So that includes, you know, the Udo mobile app. And then it also includes stuff like our Cardano serialization lib, which is a Rust library for developers to easily write um, programs that interface with the Cardano blockchain. So we have a few different um, projects we're working on, and I kind of help manage those inside Emergo, which is one of the companies behind the Cardano project. A, we announced this a while back that we're partnering with Ergo, which is a different blockchain to develop applications that can be jointly released on Ergo and Cardano together. Because Ergo uh, was created by some of the people that worked for IHK in, in the past. And um, with their experience, they have some features that differentiate themselves from, from Cardano. But they also have some similar aspects and it allows us to easily um, write applications for Ergo now, today, and use what we've written for Ergo to then make a stronger Cardano version using the experience we have with Ergo and the knowledge we um, got from building it, uh, because it's the smart contract platforms are somewhat similar, um, it allows us to, instead of having to wait for Gogwin to be released for Cardano, which isn't, you can't write smart contracts on Cardano yet, on Cardano yet uh, but you can on Ergo. And so that allows us to uh, start building prototypes, start building ideas, figuring out you know, what we can build, how we build it for UTXO-based blockchains. And then um, once Gogwin is released on Cardano, then we can you know, ship stuff from day one. So we've already released some projects for um, Ergos, such as a project called Oracle Pools, which is an Oracle system for Ergo. And the exact same system will work for Cardano. So that means that, you know, day one on Cardano for smart contracts will have, you know, an Oracle system running already. So it's a win-win for everybody involved. Yuroi is the team that I manage, one of the teams I manage. It's not just me, but definitely do a lot of coding myself and help a lot with the planning. The main goal we have for Yodoi is kind of to be the gateway to the financial world. And so most of the times when we write new features, we have to think about how do we reach this goal while also trying to keep it simple. And it, it's very hard in blockchain because the underlying systems are really, really complex. And if the user doesn't understand what's going on, it's easy for them to make a mistake. And so we spend a lot of our time trying to give the depth of functionality needed for users to make informed decisions, um, while also trying to provide a, a simple abstraction for users who uh, don't want to you know, spend months reading about all, how all this works under the hood. And for the uh, financial gateway side of things, we're currently working on adding kind of a DAP functionality to mm -hmm. Yuroi. So that means that, you know, for example, if you go on a website that hosts the DAP or Cardano, uh, you would be able to interact with the website powered through Yudoi to make, you know, payments or interact with DAPs in any way, similar to, you know, what currently exists in, in other ecosystems. You already have it inside your browser and it already manages your wallets there. Uh, so it makes sense that if you're using a website that needs to interact with Cardano, uh, there will be some sort of button where you can uh, press and it prompts permission. Do you want to inject Yudoi into this web page? And if you accept, then, you know, the web page can access, you know, some information about what wallets you have and, you know, uh, start asking you, hey, do you want to create a transaction to, you know, buy a stable coin, for example, with the DEX, or do you want to, you know, participate in some sort of event or play some game? And that can all be powered through the Yudoi extension. Now we have you know, similar ideas for mobile. Um, like getting this working in mobile has, is historically uh, more challenging. Um, so that's why we're gonna focus on the Yodo extension first to add this functionality. And then once we have a, a good pipeline for this experience, again, with both Ergo and Cardano, then we'll work on the Yodo mobile equivalent for this functionality. <laughs> So Yudoi doesn't currently have a UI for adding metadata to transactions, um, but there's not any blocker to adding this functionality. It's just, you know, there's only 24 seven or 24 hours in a, in a day. Um, and so we haven't had time to add a, a special 
UI for adding transaction metadata. But definitely that's something that if you had kind of a DAP system, you know, you would really need something special from us because as the DAP submits a transaction, you know, for example, if you're buying a stable coin and the government requires you to submit, you know, some identification document at the same time, then, you know, whatever interact, uh, website you're interacting with could handle adding all this data and, and bring the transaction properly for you. And also, we would like to have this kind of experience inside the UX Network for people who are sending transactions directly um, instead of, you know, through a DAP. Uh, but right now we're, we're fairly busy with, you know, Catalyst support and the Allegra mm -hmm. and Mary hard fork support. And so this is just uh, unfortunately not, not one of our priorities. Okay. And Emergo helped write, you know, one of the libraries for transaction metadata. So if you look at the Emergo Rust library for Cardano, we allow um, creating transaction metadata, metadata in four different ways. I'm not going to go over it in too much detail in this call because I think it's probably too technical. Um, but we, you know, provide different ways for different developers who need different tools for their um, application. And so, you know, we're we definitely care about transaction metadata, and we've definitely put, you know, work into making this tooling more accessible to developers. Um, but unfortunately, we just haven't had time to actually add a. UI for this inside the Euro extension. So Daedalus is what is referred to as a full node, which means it downloads the full blockchain on your computer and verifies the full blockchain. Okay. And so that's nice because then you're participating in the decentralization of the network. Um, and you have, you know, the whole blockchain synced on your local, local computer. And no matter what happens, you know, you can be confident that you have the Cardano blockchain and, and you know you can verify everything yourself. The downside is obviously that this requires you know a certain bandwidth to download all the connect all, all the blocks and a certain amount of storage to store the, the full blockchain. Mm -hmm. Now the Cardano blockchain is not that big. Obviously it, it will grow over time as we add more features like smart contracts and, and, and Hydra for sharding and so on. Um, and so there's there's a certain accessibility problem with, with this solution. And so Yoroi is what's called a light wallet, which means it doesn't download the full history of the blockchain. Instead, it queries um, our, our network and asks, okay, what transactions do I have for, for this wallet? And then we return the transactions. Only, only, we only return what's relevant to you, basically. So instead of having to download the full Cardano blockchain, you only download the very small subset of, you know, which parts you need to get your transaction history. So this is uh, much easier because it allows us to, you know, run this in a web browser or in a mobile phone, which helps a lot with accessibility. But obviously there's a downside that you, you, know, you don't have the full um, wallet stored. So we think there's, there's a use case for, for both applications. And you know, they, they both have a comparable amount of security if you use a hardware wallet. Um, and so if you're a hardware wallet user, you're more than welcome to use both. For the Yoda extension, we have, uh, we spend a lot of time on security because you know, a lot of people have doubts about using mm -hmm. stuff in the web browsers which is why we made the Euro extension a browser extension and not a website. Because if it's a website, um, it's very hard to guarantee any security about it. Uh, there's been many, many hacks in the past where websites get swapped or hacked and so on. But with the browser extension, um, it's uploaded to you know the Google store, the Firefox store. You have to download it, which verifies the data. And then once you download the extension, it doesn't download um, the page from our server. Like the extension is stored on your device. And so there's no way for something to just randomly switch. And so this provides a lot of the same securities you would get from a desktop application uh, while still giving you the ease of use. So I like the idea of blockchains in general. So I'm not a very tribalistic person. Um, and so I was excited about Bitcoin uh, before Ethereum came out. And then when Ethereum came out, I was, I was excited about Ethereum. And, you know, every platform had their problem. And when, when Cardano came out, I felt like it was a project that was um, solving a lot of the missing rigor uh, that, that plagued the Ethereum ecosystem. That's what I really liked about it. Uh, a lot of the projects on Ethereum were just, you know, prototypes, including the, the blockchain itself. Mm -hmm. You know, people just, you know, tried whatever to see, you know, what works. And that's great as an engineering experiment, but you know it's not a great place to, to put all your money if you don't have very good security guarantees about what's going on. 
And so the exciting thing about Cardano is that we had a different mentality. We said, okay, let's first do the research and go work on you know formal verification and, and try and do this the, the proper way. And because I had a, a math background, so I studied math in university uh, on top of computer science, um, that really appealed to me. And so when Cardano came out, I thought um, this is not only a, an interesting project, one I think will move the uh, blockchain ecosystem forward, but it's also a project where I feel like I can contribute and my contribute contributions um, help the crypto ecosystem as a whole. So imagine, for example, if I'm working on a project on Ethereum and you know it crashes and burns and you know for some reason it didn't take off and it, you know it just didn't work out. If that happens, you lost you know a lot of time of your life working on, on this you know project that didn't work out, and that's obviously sad. Nobody wants to do that. Uh, but because for Cardano, we're, we're doing kind of a first principles approach to it, all the work that we're doing on the research and the approach and so on um, can be reused uh, by anybody uh, for the, the general crypto ecosystem. So that means that, you know, all the work that you do for the Cardano ecosystem um, has more inherent uh, me meaning because you're pushing, uh, you know, technology that um, helps move the entire ecosystem forward. It's like, you know, with coronavirus, people don't want a vaccine that's, you know, rushed out. They want to, you know, take something that's, that's been researched and, you know, tested and, and they know they can trust. And people want this because they trust their health to this vaccine, right? And money's the same way, right? You don't want to trust your money to something that's just going to crash and burn because money is useful, um, very much so. And so if you trust your money to something that, that, that may just, you know, vanish overnight, um, you know, it, it's, it's probably not a wise decision. And so similar to vaccines, how we have to do research papers and do a lot of experimentation and so on for, you know, for the financial industry also, we have to take a very careful approach um, to make sure that, you know, nobody that uses their products um, has adverse side effects. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's very hard to make solutions targeted to specific countries without physically being in those countries. So, for example, we have some partnerships with Emergo in Indonesia. Um, to do that, we actually have people, you know, based in Indonesia and talking to people and understanding the problems and so on. And so the, the best that, that we can do to target the whole world, because we can't have a presence in every country, is to try and build you know, toolings and the, an ecosystem that people on the ground in the various countries uh, can use to build out local solutions. And I think that's what, in a sense, we're, we're doing with Yudoi. Uh, for Yudoi Mobile and the Yudoi Extension, these are things that people on the ground um, who may not have otherwise access to these tools mm -hmm. can download on their phone and, you know, get started. But overall, as, as kind of a goal of blockchain is we want to provide, you know, stability, you know, a lot of African countries still struggle to get, you know, a stable economic systems. A lot of them go through uh, currency crises. A lot of them go through, you know, government reforms and so on that uh, really stop the development of, of confidence in governments and in currencies. And this hampers growth a lot. You know, a lot of people who are investing, they want to, you know, put their money somewhere where they have confidence that their money will not just, you know, disappear in revolution overnight. And so, um, you know, by, by, helping to build out a stable financial infrastructure, build on trust, which is what blockchain is about, all about. How can we trust each other? Um, we think we're, you know, developing the, the right tools so that people such as yourself who have more, you know, experience in the, you know, local problems, you know, can, can talk with us and figure out how they can use the toolings that um, we're building um, to, you know, help the local people. So I, you know, work on the development side. And so from the business perspective, I don't have that much insight. Uh, the insight I have is, you know, here's a project we want to do, here's the requirements from a technical perspective and what do we need to get that done? And so unfortunately, I don't think I, I am the right person to go into an in-depth, you know, answer about um, the business side of how, how we got the partnership. Um, but if, if, you know, anybody is watching the uh, this episode who wants to learn more about, you know, traceability, work we're doing in Indonesia and how that can be applied for 
you know, different jurisdictions or different companies, um, definitely reach out to Nico, who's our CTO, and he can probably, you know, give you a more in-depth explanation of what we're doing and how it can be used for other projects. Okay, thank you. Right, yeah, and I know that the IOTK is definitely doing a lot of work in Africa. Um, and so if you're looking at, they'd probably be a good group to reach out to. I think in, in general with smart contracts, it, although it works in a different way than, than a lot of other parts of computer science, you know, core computer science skills are still very, very useful. And so, you know, I, I often see people who go into writing dApps as their first programming experience, which is fine. Um, you know, it's great to be passionate about a, a project and, you know, jump right into it. Um, but the core development skills that you would learn um, through any kind of general computer, computer science course or material is hugely valuable, not only in the projects you build, um, but also in, you know, finding a job that may pay you to, to build a project that you're passionate about. And so sometimes we get candidates that are, you know, very passionate about blockchain um, and the passion is great, but sometimes they lack the, the, the CS skills for them for us to actually hire them. And so that's my, my biggest advice for developers. If there's a part of Cardano that you're not familiar with, you know, we can always train you after you join. Um, but if there's a part of, you know, basic computer science that you're not familiar with, that's much harder for us to teach as a company. And that's, you know, the same for any domain, not just blockchain. And so that's generally my, my advice. So we have kind of two components to our education. One of them is very much blockchain centered. And that's, for example, what I do with Cardano. And so I do a lot of educational material about Cardano, about you know the papers that we're working on, about the upcoming protocol changes, and this kind of information specific to the Cardano community. We have another person on our team called Robert Kornacki, and he works on the smart contract side of things. And so he writes a lot about smart contracts in Ergo and smart contracts in Cardano and the kind of ideas and projects we want to build using these smart contracts and how we plan to actually build these tools. Um, but we also have a kind of more enterprise focused um, education effort, which is possibly what you're referring to, which is called Amerigo India. And that one is more focused about how do we get people who want to transition into the blockchain industry to get the education they need and get an actual job. And so that means that, you know, we have to work with the local job market in India and see what skills are required and, you know, work with the students to help them enter the, the ecosystem. And, you know, as the blockchain ecosystem grows, that benefits everybody in, in crypto, including Cardano. But obviously during these, these courses, we obviously, you know, talk about Cardano and the work we're doing. And we talk to them about the opportunities that are present in our ecosystem. I feel like it's, it's going to be hard going forward because as we see right now, a lot of countries are gearing up regulation uh, that will probably hamper a lot of the adoption of the crypto ecosystem. Um, so, you know, we're going to do the, the best we can to you know, make sure the, the tool is accessible by as many people as possible because essentially that's um, the goal of crypto. The goal is if you get the tools to the people um, then they, they'll be able to use the tools more effectively than any central organization would um, to organize what they need for their personal um, needs and personal lifestyle. And so, you know, our goal at Emergo is to be able to provide these tooling, provide these platforms uh, to people so that, you know, if they need the ability to send and receive money, they can do it through Uroi. If they need the ability to, you know, do lending or, or trading assets and so on, they will be able to do that through you know, DEXs or other platforms built on top of Cardano. And from our perspective, the way to reach adoption is, you know, to provide as many tools to the people so that, you know, they can um, leverage these tools in whatever way um, works best for them in their community. Hopefully, well, I, I work a lot on this project. It's, you know, not only my job, but it's also my passion. 
and you know this is true for a lot of people in, in Cardano. Charles also, you know, Charles is not just a job; it's you know his life's work, right? And so it's it's a it's a lot of work. And so I imagine twenty twenty one will not be a, any particular reduction in hours. I'll still be you know working passionately, and, and a lot of people in you know our company feels the same way. Um, but obviously, our team is growing. You know, we have more developers now than we did at the start of the year. And the same thing is true for IHK, the team keeps growing. And with the Catalyst project, which is a you know treasury system that's launching later this month, um, you know, we'll have a way to have a decentralized way for people in the community to apply for funding. And I think this will be a, a huge um, way to increase the amount of developers actively contributing to the Cardano ecosystem. And so if you look at the GitHub history for projects, uh, you can see that Cardano currently usually ranks number one in number of developer activity. And so already with it, you know, all the developers we have at Emergo and IOHK and the team at the CF, we're all already, you know, depending on which metrics you look at, the best project are close to. Um, and with the, the Catalyst system, the, the treasury launching recently, they'll just bring on a, you know, a new wave of engineers and builders coming to our ecosystem. So I think 2021 will be a, a huge year for developer uh, adoption of Cardano. And usually um, once you get a developer on board for them to build a super compelling user experience, it takes time, nothing gets done overnight. And so, you know, a lot of projects that you see get popular, for example, on Ethereum, uh, I feel like when they're made, they're usually made, you know, maybe like two or, or three years before, you know, the first very solid version. And so, you know, I expect that in 2021, we're gonna have a huge influx of developers coming in and joining our ecosystem and starting to build tools. And then you'll have stuff slowly trickling in. And then maybe, you know, 2023 will be when a lot of these projects come to like a really mature step where they have something that um, they're ready to present to not just the crypto community, but to the general, you know, um, internet. Um, you'll see kind of a, a huge influx of projects um, built on Cardano um, coming out. So I'm really excited about that. 